Hello, all. Welcome to the Art of Manifesting Money, How to Attract Abundance, Create Consistent Money Flow, and Achieve Financial Freedom. We have Beth Holzbrink with us today, and we're so excited to hear about your story. How are you doing today, Beth? I am great, Anna. I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it's a pleasure and an honor. We have so much in common, and we always have a great time when we talk. But now I want to share (laughs) it with the world. (laughs) (laughs) That we do. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited to share my story as well. You know, um, first tell us a a little bit about your story, and then just um, let us know what you've done to get to where you're at today and how you've gotten unstuck in different areas of your life. Yeah, so I look back on my life and from an early age, I just had a lot of challenges with depression and anxiety. I know that my mom even said that I just seemed like a sad kid at some points. And I remember growing up with that. And in school, you know, I had friends, and I don't even know if all my friends would have known that I was having some of these feelings, but I just had a lot of that belief that something was wrong with me. Um, I did well in school, but I got to the point where I was kind of slow with my schoolwork, um, ended up being diagnosed with a learning disability, but before that ever occurred, I just thought, you know, well, I might do well in school, but something's wrong. I feel kind of stupid. I'm slow. I get distracted easily. Those sorts of things. So growing up with that, those beliefs, I just came to think, you know, something's not right about me. I'm, you know, a little different or I don't fit in, those sort of things. So once I got through college, um, you know, life was fine. It wasn't um, extraordinary. I think I was coping. I learned how to cope with life. Um, through my 20s, and then into my 30s, I ended up getting married in my early 30s, and that's when I would call it my my wake-up call happened, because I I had these underlying belief systems that, you know, I wasn't good enough or something was wrong with Mm me. Um, I entered into a, a marriage that probably wasn't the healthiest, and it got very chaotic very quickly. So I got to that point where I became a seeker of healing, of help, of something that was going to give me relief from what I was going through. So that's when I dove into personal development work, spirituality, studied all kinds of quantum physics, metaphysics, anything I could get my hands on. So you (laughs) sounds like this is familiar to you. It is very. I love it. Yeah, and I unfortunately I do think it takes something pretty dramatic at some points to wake us up. I, I have you heard that um, analogy where it's like the universe will first whisper in your ear, and then it'll tap on your shoulder, and then it'll hit you in the head with a frying pan. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it takes yeah. that, that the frying pan. <laughs> yeah, you got the it's frying like, pan. I totally got the frying pan. Um, but, you know, that's okay. I I knew that I wasn't happy in a lot of ways throughout my life, but I didn't do the necessary work to do anything about it because, honestly, I just thought that's how I was. I didn't realize that I could change. And it wasn't until I got into the point where I felt like I had no choice that I finally did the work that allowed me to change. So one thing I did is I hired a coach and started working with her regularly. And in addition to reading everything I could get my hands on, doing all kinds of processing, and I finally got to the point where I was able to leave my marriage. And it took a lot. It took a lot of strength to do it. Um, Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I didn't make that decision lightly, but I knew it was what I had to do. And... I show up in life in such a different way now, and other people have even noticed. So I know it's not just me. 
um, seeing the difference in me. I, other people make comments as well. And it got to the point where a lot of people were very inspired by what I had to say and, and some of my experiences, and I just knew that part of my journey and part of the reason I even went through everything that I did was so that I can share it with others and, you know, help other people overcome the same challenges I had. That's amazing. I love how, you know, just listening to you, it resonates with me, but how many people that it resonates with that are listening? Yeah, I just got chills. (laughs) Yeah, it's just... Sorry. (laughs) No, that's fine. I just was thinking, what is one thing that helped you that you, after seeking and after, you know, doing your coaching and is there one thing that stood out to you that helped you the most? Oh, it's hard to pinpoint it to one thing. Um, But the first step I think for me was this, I created this new level of awareness of what I was not only experiencing my life, but how I was showing up in life, how I was contributing to some of my life experiences. Um, so instead of almost being this, you know, or sleepwalking through my life, just kind of going with the motions, I, it was mm-hmm. almost like I learned how to take a step back and recognize patterns okay. and see things that, wait a minute, this has happened before. I'm, I'm having the same experience, just the faces are different. Correct. And there so you go, right yeah. then, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, wait a minute, I'm the common theme here. You know, what am I contributing to this? Correct. So with that comes responsibility um, and and really owning my, my role in my life. Um, you know, it doesn't excuse other people's behaviors. However, mm-hmm. I have no control over how other people behave. The only thing I can change is myself. And so that's what I learned how to focus on. That's good. Now, whenever um, whenever you go through some of the challenges, has that helped you get and develop develop it, your products and your ways of helping? Oh my gosh, absolutely! Because there's no way I would be able to support people the way that I do now without having gone on this journey myself because I was living so unconsciously before and I wasn't able to recognize these patterns. And now I almost have a knack for it when I'm working with people um, Mm -hmm. one-on-one. I can just see the common theme that's underlying the challenges. And instead of, you know, trying to change the external circumstances as they are right now, I like to go deeper. You know, let's look at the root. Let's pull this thing out <laughs> from the from the very origin, and then the whole pattern can collapse. Kind of like our theme is working on the inside so you can be successful on the outside. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because if you only focus on the external circumstances, I I say it's almost like putting a Band-Aid on something. You're just covering it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've got to go. Um, you got to go deeper. You got to go within, because that's what's creating the outside situation. In my opinion, you know, I believe that we're all energy. Everything is energy. So, mm-hmm. what we put out is what we're you know calling into us, so to speak. We're we're in resonance with it, and until we change what we're putting out the outside we can muscle our way through it and maybe we'll get some change initially but ultimately it'll just go back to meet us wherever we are we are oh that's beautiful i love that with all of the um things that you've done working on the inside out and getting unstopped how can we get unstopped yeah oh get unstuck yeah, get I unstuck think, and unstopped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Become unstoppable. How's that? Yeah, that's great. 
Yeah, I think, um, like I mentioned before, um, it, the first step to me was just that awareness. Um, awareness of what was happening, not just to me, but almost for me. Um, why these things were coming up in my life, being able to recognize the patterns. Um, and then taking responsibility for how I was part of creating the patterns. And then just making a decision to show up differently. Um, so that's just kind of the, the framework um, that I, I use. But then I think it's important to really pay attention to, you know, how we're thinking, you know, the thoughts that are running through our minds all the time, uh, what belief systems that we're holding on to that keep us stuck in these mm -hmm. patterns, you know, in these limited ways of being, um, our emotions. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. if we don't process them appropriately, they just get tucked and stored away. They don't go away, but they're Fine. still a part of us. And that stuff runs us in a way that we have no idea, I think. Do you believe in um, meditation and visualization um, as a part from something else? Or I'm a firm believer of it. I mean, I do meditation and visualization day in and day out, and I couldn't do anything without it. What's your take on it? Absolutely. So are you asking when you're in a meditative state, you do a visual, visualization or you do? Yeah, or both. Yeah. I do either or. I both. do meditation some and then I do, you know, visualization at times and, you know, or I'll, I'll do them together. But um, that's been a big part of my practice. Has it been one of yours? And if so, has it helped you? Absolutely. Um, meditation, I don't do it as regularly as I'd like to. Um, mm -hmm. and sometimes for me, I find that I get more benefit when I'm doing a, a meditative activity like running um, versus oh, good. That, sitting so still. So movement. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Movement. Um, movement. Absolutely. Um, I, some of my best ideas come when I'm running. Um, and actually oh, the idea for running. The name for my business came when I was out running. I, you know, I call it Rock Your Light because I think that's Love why it. we're here on this planet is we're here to rock our light. And so, yeah, that came to me while I was running. But I do some, some quiet meditation as well, and I've gotten other ideas because I do believe that meditation not only does it put us in a calm state as far as our brain waves, um, it's also the time where we can receive answers. Because we spend so much of our day distracted with <laughs> noise, social media, text, computer, TV, whatever. And it's right. during those quiet times where we can actually receive those bigger messages and guidance. Oh, yeah. That, that's a good point because we spend so many time, uh, so many days, you know, busy and you don't get present. Absolutely. A lot of the time. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, I totally believe that. Um, letting our, I guess, our light shine. I like that. Yeah. And I say, I say rock your light because I'm kind of playful. I like to have fun. I think play is such an important part of transformation, actually, because, you know, so much of the stuff we talk about is so serious. People have really had um, hard times in life. And, you know, when we're, we're young, we know how to play. We just go out and have fun, and then we grow up and we get kind of stuck in our adult lives and we forget how to play. And I think really there is so – it's very spiritual, honestly. Just go out and play and have fun. It's yeah, and I like, when, I like whenever you were saying um, in one of your Facebook posts the other day, what if every ending is actually the beginning? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's another – Oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that was just really amazing because a lot of people think it's the end, but really it's a door opening to something new and better. And if we shift our perspective on those things, it's amazing mm -hmm. how much relief I think we can feel on the inside. And that's definitely something I've noticed from my experience is learning how to change 
how I react to things instead of reacting, learning how to respond from a deeper consciousness of looking at something that way. Like, well, maybe this had to fall apart so something better could come together. Correct. I, I totally, I've had that happen many of times in my life. And if I, you know, if I would have thought that way in the beginning, you know, it would have caused me to have less heartache at that point. And also it would have um, caused me to make some decisions, you know, quicker than I did at the time. But all of that said and done, you know, it's another notch in our belt. You're you're so right. Um, the the way that we perceive things has such an effect on how we feel. So if we can choose to perceive it from, you know, a I don't know a more holistic view or a higher standpoint, then we mm-hmm. feel better, and we right. might even get more out of it. Right. Is there I, anything I was telling, that you want? Oh, go ahead. Oh well. Well, I was just I just had an example come to mind. I was telling you a few weeks yeah. ago that my my parents' sweet little chihuahua out of the blue had this catastrophic incident where it was it's called a fibrocartilaginous embolism. She went paralyzed in an instant from her waist down. And initially, wow. I was just devastated because I love this little dog. She's only seven years old. She cracks me up whenever I watch her run around, how she wiggles, and she's got a lot of energy. So when I first learned about this, I, w- I was devastated. I cried, and I started thinking mm-hmm. about what she couldn't do. But what right. was amazing to me was how quickly, once I felt the grief of that and got to the other side, I started to think and ask higher questions like, what if she is trying to teach us something? What if she going through this is going to show me how you can really face adversity and overcome odds? And I tell you what, it's only, (laughs) and I never used to think that way. I always would find the negative viewpoint of things. But three and a half weeks later, she has started wagging her tail. She had no sensation, no movement below her waist, and now she's wagging her tail. And I was, oh I'm was i just amazed by that. That is so amazing. And, and there you go. That example is just one little example that we can take in and learn from. I love it. Yeah, I think lessons are everywhere. It's just developing the awareness to start recognizing them for what they are instead exactly. of, you know, missing the opportunities that we're giving in every moment of life to learn and grow and evolve. Right. And what are we going to be able to offer today to our listeners on your amazing Rock Your Light <laughs> website? Yeah, so if- if they go to, uh, or if you go to www.rockyourlight, that's R O C K Y O U R L I G H T, rockyourlight.com, and you look on the right hand side, you'll see a link to um, a little ebook I wrote called Three Keys to Getting Unstuck Tips for Changing Your Life from the Inside Out. And I've touched on the three keys here a bit today, but I go into more detail. And there's actually some um, practical exercises you can go through in there that will support you as well. Oh, great. I cannot wait. And I wanted to thank you so much for join, uh, joining us for our, you know, just quick little interview to know exactly what Beth is doing and get your message out to everybody and just let your light shine because you just are so amazing. And like I said, we could spend hours on the phone every time we're together. Oh, absolutely. And and I just want to say to everyone listening that um, there there is hope. You can change. You can shift from the inside out and experience a new way of being, and it's very empowering. So I um, I thank you so much for your time. I thank you, Anna. This has been wonderful. Oh, thank you. I just got chills when you were saying that. It just resonates so, and it gives you me a sense of hope whenever I'm going through stuff, you know, personally. Thank you for that. Oh, absolutely. It's my pleasure.